Hey everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Mike Dolkson. I work on the Microsoft education team. Lots of socials down there if you want to engage. So we're going to talk a lot today about AI. AI did all over the news, lots of articles, chat GPT, open AI, all this good stuff. I like to get any, any bit of Ron Burgundy from Anchorman uh, and, and his legendary quote, if pay out for Ron Burgundy, AI yeah, would say, uh, I don't know how to put this, but AI yeah, is kind of a big deal. So everywhere right now. And OpenAI has partnered with Microsoft deeply. OpenAI is the leading AI company in the world. We're all leading models, GPT-4 Turbo, and there's decades of research and development with Microsoft. We've been in that space as well. We also are committed to responsible AI in everything we do. I'll talk about that briefly before we get going. They've got large language models, these LLMs at scale. So Microsoft's partnered with OpenAI. So all the AI pieces you see in here are powered by OpenAI. Responsible AI principles. So everything you're also seeing today is grounded in all of our work with responsible AI. Fairness, reliability, trustworthiness, secure, transparent. And so there's an entire responsible AI platform and process inside of Microsoft to make sure everything we go through has these principles in place. So to start, when you hear Microsoft Education and AI, these are the three categories that we're going to talk about. Mostly, I'm not going to cut to the last one, but in general, you got Copilot, <coughs> you have Copilot for F365. We have Microsoft Education specific AI that we're working on, and not in this session, but you can also learn more about your own Copilot. So you can build your own Copilots against your own school data with Azure, we're not going to go into that today, but that's also a possibility. So Microsoft Copilot, we're going to get going, and, and there's a lot of Copilots out there. Uh, but my Copilot, you've got the powerful AI models, so OpenAI's leading models are integrated. Transparency about sources, you can see a lot of different stuff coming up that's sourced and cited. It's also always up to date. So it's not September of 2021. There's no cutoff date. Our information is up to date. And commercial data protection. So safe and secure data protection. And across the spectrum, I show copilot.microsoft.com. That's sort of our flagship 3D leading product. Got it in Edge. You see it mobile. It's in Windows. It's also in Bing. So the copilot everywhere for everyone is the way to think about it. Now to start out, this is actually, how many people have been to copilot.microsoft.com? Raise your hand. Okay, well, there's a lot of homework. You're getting an assignment. And this homework is free. There's no, there's no 20 bucks a month for this homework. Copilot.microsoft.com. And you can sign in with your school account. So up on the right, I'm signed in with my school account. It's data protected, safe, secure, reliable. Everything is there. For an educator, we also have some nice starter prompts you can experiment with, summarizing, writing, laughing even. You've got different precise mode. You can go into balanced mode. Creative mode is free GPT-4. So that's free GPT-4, no cost in here. So I'm gonna give it a prompt. I'm gonna help design a lesson plan about the history of Stonehenge, tailored it towards my ninth grade history class and add in learning objectives. I let it go. So Copilot's gonna spit this out. It's sped up a little bit. At the top, it's got learning objectives, but it's also sourcing and referencing things. So you can see the sources, the references. By hovering here, I get the legs. You know, English Heritage, Britannica. Now you can see those sources. I can go down and say, put some of the theories of Stonehenge into a table. There's a lot of theories. Was it UFOs? Was it the Druids? Was it King Arthur? Who knows what it was? So it can make a nice table of all the theories of Stonehenge. Now, what's also nice is it's sourced, but there's an Excel link right there. I can just click Edit and Excel. It pops that whole table right into Excel. So make a table out there in Excel, super easy. The Copilot also does images. So we can create the images using Dolly 3, again, for free. Can you create a photorealistic image of Stonehenge and Arthur in the legend with Merlin? There's some images. There's our friend Merlin hanging out of Stonehenge. So this is Dolly 3, all free, baked in. So you can create all sorts of images. Now, if you want to start a new session, you can just click new topic, it blasts that all away, and you're ready to start. Now, Copilot and Edge. I've got a 30-page PDF that I've opened up in Edge. 
Now on the upper right, there's a little co-pilot button and it pops, here's my co-pilot again. I can be precise boat, balance boat, create a boat. I'll do precise, I'll say write a summary of this PDF and we'll out the top five points. Has all that right there, really easy. Any web page, same thing. Here's a web page, I've got co-pilot open. I can generate a summary right here. I just type in summarize this web page for me. As a quick summary, and it references and cites where it took that information from that web page. So Edge has a nice little built-in copilot you can use for all sorts of research very easily. So that's all available today. It's also available on iOS and Android. Again, free. So here's iOS. I've got my copilot out. It's going to boot it up. And it's going to have a little switch. You use GPT-4, right? Like, free GPT-4, yes, please. Same thing, you can ask it all the same questions, help me design a lesson plan about the call for, for ninth graders and the clauses. Same thing that you saw in the web page, but this is free on mobile. And you can make images just like you saw with Dolly 3. I want an image merging the United States and the Soviet Union together. And Dolly 3 will go do that super fast and easy. So that's on your mobile phone. Then the last co pilot we're going to show is the straight up copilot before we get to M365 is Windows 11. So this is built into Windows 11. It's be coming to Windows 10 soon. Think about copilot as your research helper here. So right now I'm going to open up a Word document and maybe I'm going to be doing some research, researching, again, yeah, just do less of plan ideas to research. Down there I'm going to click the copilot button right on the taskbar, built in, it pops it up right here. So I got my modes, I can go say create a mode, I've got some options here, and say, hey, let me do research for my cold war let's him play. So it's got a bunch of different research, it's sourcing and citing, I can copy that, just paste it right into Word. So very easy to just get things right out of Copilot straight into Word. A bunch of other things you can do with the Windows Copilot. I'm not going to go into detail today, but you can see we're bringing this so that all of our different services and having that available. Now, you want to learn the basics as an educator on how to get started with Copilot, the basics of prompting. Well, how do I use Dolly? How do I use these new tools? We've got a free course on the Microsoft Learn site. Microsoft Learn has all of our free stuff. You can go there. This has been one of our more popular courses. We've got two. So one more at the very end of this talk. This has been super popular. So this is a great one to share if your educators are like, oh, this Copilot sounds scary. What should I do? It's a great place to start. Now, moving on to Copilot for M365. What does that mean? Well, first off, it's now available for all educators and faculty. This takes all of your data in Microsoft Brow. What is Brow? That's a fancy word for your documents, your PowerPoints, your Excel, your emails, your chats, your internal school network. All that M365 data, and we fuse it with the large language module, sort of the operating system of that. You add in things like Copilot of Word, Copilot of Excel, Copilot of PowerPoint, and the web. So that's the F365 Copilot. Now this one is a paid offering. This one is not free, but you get a lot more benefits because you've baked it into the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. And just like before, secure, compliant, privacy, right? UK and all of Europe, very stringent data privacy protection rules, and I totally set up for that. We are deep, deep in the data and compliance with Copilot. So what might that look like in our good friend Microsoft Word? So we're going to go into Word here. We've got a lesson about and it's lost. So I'm going to go highlight a paragraph. I'm a teacher here. I'm like, you know, I'm going to rewrite this. Go over here and just click the little Copilot button and say rewrite with Copilot. And it'll give me a couple options. There's one, there's two. I'm going to rewrite that. You know, I like this one. But you can change the tone. So I'm going to have concise, or I can have casual, or imaginative, but for concise, now it rewrites that paragraph, makes it a little more concise. There's a couple options. I can go back and forth and series. We'll keep that. Now also, let's say I've got Newton's third degree laws, and I want to rewrite and say, I'd like to pull them out. Well, there's a visualize as a table. Visualize any content that makes sense. That's going to pull those three laws into a table, just like bang. So very simple and easy. But I might want to pull Copilot up on the page. So up at the top and the right, I click the Copilot button. And here's Copilot. Got some crops built in, summarize, ask a question about this document. 
I had to go down to the bottom and say, what are the top three concepts in this document? And Copilot quickly comes up with that. You have to make ideas and it sources it. I've got a bunch of prompts built in. So if I'm going to learn how to prompt, I can say, look at the Copilot now. These are word prompts to get you started and learn how to prompt inside of Word. If I'm starting a new document, I'm going to draft Copilot. I'm going to say, make me a quiz based on this document. And I'm going to point to this new laws of lotion. So I get to point to any document and it's going to analyze that document. And now it's going to create a quiz based on the document that I pointed to it. It's made an entire quiz on that document. Now, if I want to have a little fun, replace all the bullet points with emojis that make sense. You know, Copilot's with that. You can probably see that on chat GPT too. But the idea here is you can have all sorts of speeding up and time saving as an educator is baked into your Microsoft Word workflow. Now, similar in Excel, and I showed this this morning, I know I'm in the UK. Who's a fan of the Office? Either the US version or the UK version. Any fans of the Office? So I'm using a US Office name, so don't pay me my UK brands. I know it was invented here. So I can have all my Office characters over here at their test scores. You know, Dwight Schrute, Mike Scott. I can open up Copilot, the upper right, I can start asking questions about my data. So I can say down here, hey, show me the top scores in the class and sort by the highest score. And it's going to inject that right into here. So Dwight Schrute, 100%, of course he did. And it gives a little summary of how the class did. I can go and say, are there any outliers in this data? And I can ask Copilot, and it's going to generate and analyze. Oh, there's some outliers here, maybe. And I can say, Gave me other insights about this document. But I had it all these things and I could just click add it. It just pops all that stuff. I've got a nice dashboard that you send me. So imagine just asking questions about your data, sort of like this, do it like that. Don't make me even get a PhD at pivot tables, right? And it'll take care of that for you. And just pop it right into Excel like that. Now the last app I'm gonna show that you're probably familiar with is Teams. Now, who here, raise your hand if you like taking meeting notes. Who's a fan of taking meeting notes here? We got one guy, all right, yeah. Really funny, like one note, right? One note core. But most people don't like taking meeting notes. So Teams has an AI meeting note taker. Copilot is right here, I did notes. And it's gonna listen to the transcription. Copilot's gonna like, take the notes for me. It's a megaton time saver. But if I wanna ask Copilot about the transcription of the notes, I could easily just go over here and say, hey, Copilot, Pop it up. Mm -hmm. And what did Miguel say about customer priorities? Copile analyze the shared notes and I'll inject this, listen to the transcript. Yeah, that's what Miguel said. Okay. So well, massive, your, your next staff meeting, wouldn't it be great if there's just an AI note taker? And you could ask questions about to the AI note taker about stuff that you were mentioned at, like, hey, AI note taker, did they mention me at all because I fell asleep for 10 minutes? We're like, oh yeah, they did, they assigned you a task. Uh, so this is also part of M365 Copile. The last one I'll show for M365 Copilot is in the web. So I showed you Core Copilot here, but if you have M365, you will have the ability to flip Copilot into work mode, make it work. So now it's gonna look across your emails, your chats, your documents, everything. So this is like my AI virtual assistant. Down at the bottom, I can start asking questions. Hey, summarize where I was mentioning the last 24 hours across emails and chats. Highlight what I should prioritize today. Copilot looks across all your stuff, like, okay, here's where you were mentioned. Here's the top three recommendations based on what I did. Here's what you should do today. So you've got like a little assistant who doesn't want that. They can help you out and give you feedback on what you might want to be doing. Just massive time savings here. So that is all available today. The other one we're going to switch gears now and just go into core features for educators that are built into Microsoft Teams. So Teams is available for free, A1, A3, A5, anyone can use it in education. And everything you're gonna see here in Teams is also free and built in. A lot of it's a private preview, but coming soon. So our AI, it's in context. So you're in context to make your rubric or make the instructions. The educator is always in control. You're in control. We don't blast stuff out without your, you know, before you say so. You get to repeat things and look it over. Saving time is the big one here. All about saving educators. At staff time. Also, tenant admins can turn the whole thing off. So if you have a tenant admin or your school says, no generative AI for no one, flip the big switch and just shut it all off. That's your fault. So the first thing I'm gonna show 
is teams generating rubrics. Again, this is for educators and it's in five of preview. So let's say I want to make a rubric with the help of AI and teams. So I'm going to pop this up, give it a title. We're also going to be able to choose things like what's the age range. It's almost like a wizard, right? You're not doing the open prompt. We're kind of giving you prompts to help you along the way. Give it some criteria and suggestions and then just generate a draft rubric that's going to go and spit out your full rubric. Now you can use it, you could not use it, you can tweak it, but it just gives that huge start on that draft. And you are sort of coaching that AI on how you'd like it to go without having to start from a blank canvas is the way to think about it. And similarly with assignment instructions. So I'm making an assignment and I want to see if I select the instructions so my students know what to do. We know what class you're in, we know what you're teaching, we know some information about this so we can help tailor your instruction. So in this case, I'm going to say make an assignment about understanding the rock cycle. And immediately it's going to be able to go and start generating a set of content, add some detail. Okay, we're going to generate some content based on the rock cycle, based on what we know about your class. Where we go, we can say things like enhance key concepts. So I want to bold the key concepts in there to make it really pop out for my students. Oh, they can know specifically. I could go and say, you know what, this time I want to add some learning objectives or even add emojis. We talked about emojis before. I could go and add emojis to make it a little more fun and engaging for my students. And I can even do things like just add learning objectives. So all those are options for you to make really rich and easy to follow instructions. And it's up to you. You can use all of it. You can use some of it. It's not like you have to do the entire enchilada. And the last one I'll show in Teams right here with the little demo is classwork. So who here knows what classwork in Teams is? Our content and curriculum management solution to let you make modules and group together bring them up. So helping you draft those modules, again, it's kind of a groundwork task. What's the subject? What's your age range? Give a little bit of information in terms of what you're trying to accomplish in this module, in terms of scope of learning. And you say draft me some modules. And it's a skeleton, right? It drafts a skeleton of how you might want to lay this out. You don't have to use all of it, but there's a nice skeleton. I add these selected into my classwork, and now I've got a nice place to start that I can fill this all out. So it's just a nice jump start. So these are all in five-year preview. They're coming out for all educators globally, probably in springtime. So stay tuned on that. Now we're going to move to learning accelerators. So raise your hand if you've ever heard of learning accelerators. Decent, but Man, we've got a ways to go, huh? How about that reading progress? You've got a reading progress, search progress, and there we go. So in how to think about learning accelerators, it's AI-enhanced learning. So it's not like prompting down your throat. It's much more subtle. It's more AI-enhanced. And we think about foundational skills and future-ready skills. So reading, math, and well-being for foundational skills, and then speaking, search, and information literacy, all wrapped with insights for educators. And these are baked in and free and part of Microsoft 365. If you want to understand, like Microsoft 365 is a big amorphous concept for some people. This is where learning accelerators, I call this the layer king, I kind of like it. At the bottom layer, you've got your platform, your devices, your directory, all that good stuff. Next layer is inclusive and accessible tools that are just built in across a whole platform. Then you've got instructional tools, so Teams for Education, Class Notebook, Flynecraft, Flip. This top player is where we think about learning accelerators because it spans skills across various things and it's built in and part of the platform. So reading progress is our reading fluency tool. And we have, I'm not doing a deep dive on it today, but we have sessions from a new pate who's going deep into reading progress. Let her at bed, so look her up. But this is a reading fluency tool. When we listen to students read, we use the AI to mark up their accuracy rate because they've recorded themselves, give them correct words per minute, their reading speed and accuracy rate. Some teachers have used this and they say the challenge is that if students recording themselves in class is kind of loud, you know, like in Beth, there's all these different voices coming in. But when we added background noise suppression, so educators, if they have a noisy class, they're trying to review that student work and have the AI work cleanly, they could turn on background noise suppression, get themselves a nice clean recording. We've rolled that out fully recently. The other thing with reading progress is all about reading passages and letting students practice reading out loud. We've already had built-in libraries and you can already upload Word documents and PDFs. 
What we've added is generating a custom passage with AI. So we already know what challenging words your students have. They've struggled with certain words that they're pronouncing. So I can inject that into a new passage. So I create an AI generated passage as a team. I can choose the topic, so I'll say animals. I can choose the length of the passage, the age range, the language, we support 160 languages locale in group team, and choose the words to inject into that passage. And then I generate. And the AI generates a passage, the words are in bold. I could even say make it harder or easier with a single click. So make it more complex, less complex. But let pop with it now as a teacher. I can push that passage out to my class and do really close. Now related to that, we appreciate who here has at is requested and tried reading comprehension questions and reading progress. They comprehension. Okay, we got a few. You can add comprehension questions to those reading fluency passages. Now the AI part we've added is you can generate your own question based on any passage. So I'll say generate some questions. I'd like to make three questions for that passage and that. AI is just gonna scan through the passage and pop out a few options. This is embedded Microsoft Forms. I can edit these, I can delete them, I can add to them, I can use them. It's up to you. But it's just a big time saver to help you speed up and make questions. And then finally, Reflect. This is our well-being tool that's part of Microsoft Teams as well as Standalone. We're adding some AI to let teachers suggest some questions they might want to ask students about how things are going. It might be that you have a class and you're getting that check-in off, and you can use AI to help generate some questions. You know, here's an example about select all the reasons it might make me feel that way. So you don't have to use this, but you might want to get some ideas, like a brainstorming tool you. This is also going into private preview soon. Now, learning accelerators are actively working on right now. A lot of them is called speaker progress, and that's gonna help students be more confident with communication and presenting. It's a tall meet ready skill that's enormously time consuming because educators can't sit there and give them feedback every class all day long for every group project. Like, that's infinity time right there. But with AI, that will help you scale. So, we're gonna have the ability for an educator using this learning accelerator as it teams Choose speaker progress. So I'm gonna make an assignment that looks at students, their visual and their audio through AI to help that teacher scale. So when the teacher comes in to set up the assignment, they're gonna be able to choose what do I want speaker coach to listen to and watch while that student is presented. For example, how's the pitch? What filler words are they using? Filler words, uh, um, like, you know, my daughter says like every fifth word, I've seen that earlier. Pronunciation sensitive phrases, repetitive language, all this stuff is important to communicate well that most teachers don't have time to like, do my student will get that be done. So when you make that style with the student will open it up, they can practice straight with video, or then we're gonna have PowerPoint integration with the teachers to so practice a presentation. We will watch their audio or watch their through video and listen to audio. In this case, try varying your pitch so the coach is listening. Sometimes students are gonna look around and they're like, that's the with the hair. We catch that because the video is watching them and give them feedback. Hey, like you're not looking at the camera for half the time, or you're like looking up the window, whatever. But so when they're done, the student gets this really nice rehearsal report. Here's your top strengths. Here's your top opportunities. Then so be aware of repeated words. Awesome, really awesome. So the teacher also gets this same report. So the teacher gets the same report on how the student was speaking and we capture insights. So what we're telling, you want to know, are they repeating words less? Are they using filler words less? Is their pace getting more balanced? And we keep track and have all these insights available for educators. So we're actively working on speaker progress, but if you want to sign up for the five preview, the top secret preview, it's not really a secret because I've told you all, but it is the five preview. At the end of this deck, there'll be a link to do that. Now, coming to this one, this is, some of the most fun, this is our big announcement for VET, is Standalone Reading Coach. How many of you heard about Standalone Reading Coach? Uh, many, okay, get ready, get a lot of fun here. So we've already had Reading Coach as part of Microsoft Teams, and that is, when you use Reading in Progress, we listen to the student read, and we give that student a list of personalized words for practice that they were mispronouncing. So, I need to go here and show the Standalone Reading Coach, that is, 
not only in Windows, but it is a standalone website as well. So Reedy Coach, AI first life practice at school or home. And we're going to show Avery, she is going to be practicing. You can use this at home. And he's at school, educators who have their students practice at home with some people. So Avery's going to practice. She's going to open up Reading Coach. And what she's going to do is you can read a passage that from our library. You can paste one or create your own story with the AI. So Avery chooses from a list of characters. No, choose a dog. We're going to have to choose a location where you want this to take place. I want a dog in space. Choose space. Now, what level reader are you? You can choose a reading level to figure out the complexity of one. Now, AI is going to generate a personalized story for Avery. And this uses immersive reader technology. So she can customize and make the bots bigger, make the font flat. We even have things like picture dictionary. If you've seen the immersive reader, it's that same technology. She reads. But Avery's going to click the little play button for the microphone and practice reading out loud. So let's listen. Lo, who the dog was always curious about the world beyond his bank account. So it's listening. Now when she's done, she has her accuracy, time spent reading, she earned some achievements, but she can also practice the words that were mispronounced. So it's been listening and saying, oh, you mispronounced these words. So I'm gonna drill out the colorful. Now I can stretch the word to pipe it up. I can listen to it. Colorful. And she's gonna practice. Colorful. Great reading. So she finished, but that would ask, what do you want to happen next to your story, right? The AI generated, think about, I want Rover to go stargazing. So now it's going to generate the next chapter, the next part, and she's got a whole new set of reading. So this is engaging students. They're getting excited. They get to choose what's happening. And this whole reading coach is sort of listening and, and helping them along the way. So in this case, you've got fun characters, their achievements you can get, the words to practice. You can also see what you've already read. So if I want to drill in and see what have I been already reading, reading coach is going to keep track of that. So last seven days, here's some of my stories. We generate some fun images, little book covers. We also let you do things like read through an existing library so you don't have to use AI. And we also let you paste in your own passage. So if you want to paste in your own passage to practice reading, you can do that as well. So reading coach is available today at coach.microsoft.com. You're going to have school sighted available in probably a few weeks. That's when it's considered out. It's at the Windows Store. So if Windows 11 today, you can go and search for Reading Coach, pop it up, install it, and get going. And later in spring, it's going to be coming as an LTI extensibility for other LMSs. So to wrap up, the final thing is designer. This one is a lot of fun. We have our AI designer prompts. If you haven't tried designer, this is a great tool that educators can try out. But I want to show the AI prompts. It's so like Mad Libs, and you can create these props and share them with others. So this is for a, one of those uh, Funko Pop dolls. You can share these props everywhere. So we can just share them on social media with your class. I feel one out for me, and that's me as a Funko Pop character. That's me as a 3D character. That's me at Ben as a Lego dude in a UK flag. So all sorts of fun. Um, if you want to get a lifty library of props, Becky Keen, we're going to wake it together with all these fun shareable props with designer and those images. You can also do it back behind the screen there. And then just wrapping up, make sure you check out our AI for Educators course. This is our most popular course, 101, how do large language models work, how does Dolly work, all that good stuff. Highly recommend it. If you want to join one of our private communities, this is my final slide. Anchor Coach, Creative Coach, Speaker Progress, AI Features. We will hook you up with our private teams and our private groups. You can help us. Build the product, give us feedback, and we'd love to see you there. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so, so much, Mike. Once again, you did a great job, just as you did this morning for anyone who missed that.